diseases manifest themselves in people's imagination. And I, as an artist, I find that very interesting. What metaphors, how, how are these diseases imagined? I have worked with scientists over the past few years. And the projects are generally very collaborative. That means I work not only with scientists and technicians, but also other artists. I'm quite interested in using artwork to um, act as a catalyst to dialogue around the science. Not to answer the questions, but to open people's thinking about what's happening at the very cutting edge of science. Before I began the project, I knew virtually nothing about malaria, absolutely nothing. Since then, the kinds of things I've found out, I feel that I should have known the fact that it's such a huge killer. It's one of the most robust diseases over time that's decimated more of humans in the world than any other. Originally, I'd looked at images in the Welcome Collection. I started thinking about the historical angle. I was drawn to images that were taken as film stills. These came from a previous eradication campaign and they were public health films produced by people such as Tennessee Valley Authority, Shell and often the military. I then stumbled across Mary Dobson, a medical historian who's written extensively on malaria. She knows a lot about the previous attempt to eradicate malaria and particularly the films and the narratives that went along with this. So really, in talking to Mary, it ignited my interest much more in what had happened in that period. I think it, you know, I think it was a very fascinating period and it's so close to us. We're looking at less than 100 years ago. It, it, that really fascinated me. You can walk on Romney marshes and think, well, actually, it was malarial. The patterns of disease and where it happens are so intriguing. And I think it was one thing I really wanted to get across, that they, these things have shifted and changed. They're not fixed as we see them at this moment in time. But there is a historical context for the disease, and it shows a rather different picture. The idea of the films gradually eroded by the actions of a digital parasite really fascinated me. You have to have something to eradicate. A parasite has to have a host. And the images are kind of like bodies. I've worked with David Strang before, and he has a background in sound, but he's also a programmer. He trained at Goldsmith, so he has a kind of critical theory-based approach. The work with David has involved writing a software program that mimics the behaviour of the parasite, a sort of generic parasite, but one that is driven by data, authentic data, from fever patients. And the idea behind this is that the parasite would have, to some degree, autonomy, that it will operate according to its own ends against the imagery. There's going to be nine screens and each screen shows a different, very short section of film that will be very slowed. I'm hoping that each section of film will have its own mystery, almost surreal, a sense of the surreal about it. But as you watch the film, it will become gradually eroded, and that's what you'll be watching. You'll be watching these films loop endlessly. I really don't want to make work that explains the disease. And I don't want work that positions itself politically in any particular way. I'm trying to create work which is immersive, which operates in a, a fairly hypnotic way, but actually through the strangeness of the imagery and the actions of the parasite will invite people to reflect and maybe reflect a little bit differently on the disease.